DuPont Innovation lowers LCOE by increasing cell efficiencies and system lifetime while reducing total system cost. Materials matter. That is, for me, the show of industry. Welcome to this week's PV Tech Newscast. I'm Lucy Woods. The headlines this week. Solar manufacturing costs are driven by scale rather than cheap labour or subsidies, according to an NREL-backed report. First Solar and Bell Electric create a new joint venture and the first PV project under South Africa's renewables programmes gets grid connected. Production scale rather than low labour costs has driven China's boom in manufacturing PV modules. According to a joint report released by the National Renewable Energy Laboratory and the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, low labour costs and generous government subsidies have often been cited as the main reasons for China's dominance in PV manufacturing, views which also formed the basis of the Solar World Trade Challenge that resulted in US trade levies on Chinese PV imports last year. Excluding shipping costs, the team estimated that China-based manufacturers have a 23% minimum sustainable price advantage over US-based manufacturers today, taking into account differences in the manufacturing costs of modules, wafers and cells within each country. But as scale and supply chain advantages account for the majority of a Chinese factory's MSP advantage, this could be replicated by US-based manufacturers, the report found. This, of course, could be duplicated anywhere based on the findings. In the future, however, technology innovation could see production equalised between the US and China, according to the report, by making unsubsidised PV-generated electricity cost competitive. The report noted that the scale of state-of-the-art crystalline silicon factories today bars entry for all but the most disruptive technologies. Staying with scale, a joint venture firm has been created between First Solar and Bell Electric to pursue the building of PV power plants in Europe, North Africa and the US. The new venture, named PV Projects, will be based in Germany and formalises a business relationship first forged between the two companies around 10 years ago when Bell Electric started using First Solar's CADTEL thin film modules in projects, mainly in Germany. The companies recently collaborated on the 128 megawatt Templin solar power plant in Germany, said to be the largest deployment of first solar modules in Europe. Sun Edison, formerly MEMC, plans to spin off and IPO its polysilicon and wafer operations that could net the company around 250 million US dollars. However, in an SEC filing, Sun Edison revealed that its Sun Edison Semiconductor Division made a first half year loss of $21.4 million on net sales of $471.3 million. Revenue for the full year in 2012 was $927.4 million, down from $1.05 billion in 2011. The IPO proceeds are expected to be used for building PV power plants, while its Sun Edison Semiconductor spin-off will use a range of banks for credit facilities to further its separate business. Sun Edison is guiding nearly an 80% increase in its PV project business in 2014, with plans to sell between 750 to 900 megawatts of projects. SolarWorld is taking the United States government to court for allegedly failing to enforce trade policies against Chinese PV imports into the country. The company led a successful campaign in the US last year to introduce anti-dumping duties on Chinese module manufacturers. It now claims the US Department of Commerce has failed in a number of areas to properly police Chinese PV imports, with the result that trade remedies against Chinese manufacturers have been weakened. The company has submitted arguments to the US Court of International Trade in New York, claiming that dozens of China-based PV manufacturers did not provide evidence or adequate evidence that they operated as independent com companies free from Chinese state control or ownership. SolarWorld argues this should have led to many receiving a China-wide anti-dumping import duty rate of 250%. Instead, many companies received individual rates much lower than the claimed correct duty. SolarWorld is also challenging a separate duty that was imposed on Chinese imported aluminium framing used for PV modules. 
It is also attempting to appeal the so-called scope ruling, which enabled Chinese module manufacturers to avoid duties if they used solar cells produced outside of China. And finally, the 75 megawatt Kolkbort solar plant has become the first PV project under South Africa's renewable energy program to be connected to the grid. The project was said to have been completed three months ahead of schedule, becoming the first of the 18 PV projects of the renewables program system to go online. Scartec Solar has been awarded a total of three projects under the renewables program, with total capacity of 190 megawatts. Construction of the next two projects has started and completion is expected by mid-2014. Bidding for the 400 megawatt third round of the renewables program closed to bids last month. Well that's it from the PV Tech news team and myself for another week. You can keep up with the latest daily news at our website and on Twitter. Thanks for watching.